Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us online today. My name is Joshua Diaz, and I'm the lead pastor here at the Rock and Battle Creek. I'm so thankful that you're joining us today. Today is going to be a very special service, and I'm excited about it. So I want to pray so that we can jump into it, and then John's going to lead us into worship. Father, I thank you so much that you're with us. God, I pray that your presence would fill our homes and where everyone is at. God, we thank you that you love us and you're for us. And your word says that as we draw close to you, you'll draw close to us. And so, God, we are here for you because we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. You're welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. In the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus said, Come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This first song we're going to sing is called Build My Life. So please join in. Worthy of every song we could ever sing. Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring. Worthy of every breath we could ever bring. We live for you. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one.
you don't ever leave us. There's no sickness or disease or famine that can overtake us. God, that you won't be right there with us. So this next song is one that I wrote. It's called Spirit, Would You Lead? Please join it. Thank you, John, for leading us in worship. Well, hey, in just a couple of moments, we're going to continue on with service, but I want to take a quick look at our offering exhortation. It says this in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. It says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour out for you such blessing, that you will not have room enough to receive it. Now, this is a huge deal. We know that this is God speaking to us, and he's saying, Hey, try me now in this. Well, what's this? He's talking about bringing the tithe into the storehouse, bringing our tithe and our offerings. And he says that when we bring our tithe, he can then open up the windows of heaven over us. Now remember, in heaven there is no lack. And so think about it. If the windows of heaven are over us, or open over us, and blessing is being poured out onto our life, what does that mean for us? Things will just happen. Everything we'll need will come when it's supposed to. And God will take care of us. But you have to remember, God says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, and then he unlocks the blessing. Now, this is a huge deal because I feel like God is telling us this because he wants to pour out blessing. God doesn't want anyone in lack. And so he's, he gives us these tips and these instructions so that when we follow through with it, we'll have everything we, we need because he wants his children, he wants his people to be taken care of. And so he sets us up for success, such, such as this, bringing all the tithes into the storehouse. So, if you'd like to give, there are two ways to give. You can go to uh, therockbattlecreek.com and click the tab Give, and you can go to the Push Pay website that way, or you can text the Rock 8 to 77977, and you can do it by phone. It'll send you a link, and you can just follow the instructions and give that way. But I want to take some time to pray. Father, I thank you so much that you bless us as we give. I thank you that as we give, we're going to give with uh, cheerful hearts because we know that your word says that you love a cheerful giver. And so, God, I thank you that as we give, that you provide all of our need according to your riches and glory. And you put this in your word because you want us to know that you do want to take care of us. And this is a way that you take care of us. And so, God, we thank you that you are our God and you are our provider. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, hey, today is a very special message. You're going to be hearing from Pastor Jerry and Kimberly, and they're going to be casting vision about uh, house churches. So the rock is moving into this new season and because God is doing a new thing, and we are going to beginning, uh, we are beginning to start a movement of house churches, and we want you to be a part. And so you're going to hear from them, and they're going to cast vision, but they're also going to go into great detail about how God has been speaking these past couple months and why we're going into this new season of house churches. 
Now, just a reminder to you that this message was filmed last week. And so, regarding some of the dates and times that Pastor Jerry gives, you're going to have to keep in mind that those dates have already happened because we're hearing this a week later. So, when he does give dates and times, you can know that those things have already happened and those resources are already available, but I'll touch on that a little bit later after the message. So, prepare your, prepare your notes, get your pens ready, because this is going to be a powerful message. All right, now it's time to get into God's Word, and let me tell you, this is a game changer today. This is so prophetic. In fact, I, I want to start with this scripture in Amos 3.7 that says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secret to His servants, the prophets. So in other words, God's just not going around the world doing things on His own. He reveals to those people who are listening to him and who will speak what he says. And that's exactly the days that we're living in, isn't it? And so we've been in these days. We're in prophetic days right now. And what we're about to talk about right now is yet another fold. You know, if God is unfolding his plan, we're now going to unfold the next layer of his plan. And this is a big one. It is a big one. You know, it. Let's make sure that we have ears to hear. It's part of what mm -hmm. I'm praying for you right now, that you have ears to hear yes. and eyes to see and a heart to receive what God is doing, that you're not limited to just a what you're hearing from a human being, but that God confirms in Amen. you what he's saying. Because I'm telling you, as you said, it's a game changer. It's yeah. a game changer. Yeah, this, this is so big. Why don't you just take a moment and pray that? Yeah. Because yeah. this is about so many people's destinies, yeah. their assignments, their callings from God. And uh, if you miss the boat, I mean, yes, God can redeem things. But I tell you what, the phrase for such a time as this, God comes and, and when he speaks, that's the time to act. I love with Abraham, God would tell him what to do. And then the Bible says, and he rose very early in the morning to get it done. Yeah. And so now's the time mm -hmm. to, to hear what the Lord is saying and to act. So let's open up our hearts. Yeah. Pray over us. Yeah. Would you? Father God, you, we declare in Jesus' name yes. that we today have ears to hear, eyes to see, oh, yes. and a heart to receive what you're doing. Not the works of man, That's but right. the works of God. We declare today your kingdom come, your will be done. Thank, Thank you, Lord. Lord. We will come. not miss these days. No, we won't. We will not miss these days. It In is time to Jesus. arise, and we declare we shall <laughs> do it. Yes, we will. And you are with us, and we give you thanks. Yes, In we Jesus do. Thank name. Thank you, Lord. In amen. Jesus' name, amen, amen and amen. Okay, so we're living in prophetic times, and uh, I want you to know that God tipped us off to this season. We didn't come into this whole pandemic without God speaking to us, and I want to show you that. I'm even going to post a, a few clips for you to watch, not to highlight anything other than God, that He has been speaking, and He's still speaking now. But let me share this. Uh, back in November, in fact, Kimberly was sharing some things with me. It really provoked me, and, and what she shared with me made me think of a scripture. I feel like the Lord brought this up. And so what ended up happening is we both felt like the Holy Spirit was saying this. So she and I collaborated to do a series of teaching. And it was all based on this scripture. And let me share this scripture now. Isaiah 43 and verses 18 and 19. And here's what the Lord said. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Now, we were ministering that to all of our congregation and congregations, everybody who was watching and uh, listening. So we were ministering that. And yet the Lord, we knew, was speaking to us as well as a ministry, as a church. And the Lord was saying very clearly, hey, don't remember the former things. I'm, I'm telling you, the old wineskins, the old way of doing things. Don't remember that anymore be, because behold, I am doing a new thing and now it shall spring forth. And we even took time to minister that. Now it shall spring forth. Not in a year, not 10 years, no, now. Shall, shall you not know it? The Lord says to us, 
Don't you think you're going to know that it's coming forth, that my hand is doing this? You're going to see it. You're going to experience it. And then he even said this at the, at the end of that uh, passage. I will even make a road in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Well, we had absolutely no idea that something of a wilderness was going to be coming. You know, we, we started in November and we took that around the corner into the new year. And God was speaking this word. And then all of a sudden, uh, things started changing. Well, then we got to February the 6th. And that was a pivotal date because that was the opening night of Rock Conference. Now, when I was preparing for that message, oh, I tell you what, it was, uh, it was a battle in the spirit. And I just knew God is wanting something to come out. God is wanting to say some things here. But my mind could not grasp and comprehend the, the magnitude of what he was saying. But I felt so deeply that I've got to get these things out. I've got to share these things. And so, well, now I look back and oh, my goodness. Now I know why God was uh, urging me. You have to say this and you have to say it right now. You can't wait. You've got to bring these things out. And so uh, this is what happened. Uh, I want to play just a few clips for you here from this first message. And I, I had the team keep it on podcast all this time since February the 6th. Normally they you know, recycle and they cycle off and such. But I had them keep that one on because it's so prophetic for what's happening right now. I just wanted people to be able to go back and uh, to listen to it. And I'm going to put it on YouTube so that anybody that goes to my YouTube channel, you can watch this video. But this first uh, segment, these first segments that I want you to hear and watch right now is about a coming darkness, a coming darkness. Now, in all honesty, let me tell you, as I was ministering it, I couldn't see how it would be coming anytime soon. And I think I may have even said somewhere in the message, now this may be years away and it's probably years away. I think we've got some years and such, but I didn't realize, oh no, we were only weeks away, really just about a month away from a pandemic, a world changing pandemic being declared. This was February the 6th. Nobody had any idea that this was going to affect the world and certainly us in the United States like it did. But I want you to listen because you can hear the urgency in this message much more than something that's going to come in years to come. So let's, let's take a moment and listen closely to these clips. Now watch this. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. Watch this. For behold, for behold, what does behold mean? See this, see this, or see it like this. And what tense is that? For behold. That's the present right now. I need you to see something right now. But watch this. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. What tense is that? That's the future tense. He said, I need you to see right now that the darkness is coming. There's something that's going to happen in the future, but I don't want you to be shocked by it then. I don't want you to be caught off guard. I want you to behold and to know and to see that this is coming. For behold, right now, the darkness shall cover, notice, not just your city, not just your neighborhood, not just your nation. No, what did he say? For the darkness shall cover the entire earth. But you also need to know that that's not all that's going to be happening in the future. Something else is going to be happening. The Lord is going to arise over you. And his glory is going to be seen on you. You know, sometimes we'll hear people give prophecies about things in the future that are grim or dark. And then we'll hear somebody else give what seems to be a contradictory prophecy. Oh, it's going to be so wonderful. I mean, revival breaking out and everything. Well, guess what? Those do not necessarily contradict because the Bible says these are going to happen concurrently. Things are going to be really dark for a lot of people and things are going to be really bright for a lot of other people at the same time. Let me read to you what I heard. For the days are coming and even now have already begun for a great falling away of the people of God in America. 
People will turn their backs on the Bible and embrace lies and deceptions, partial truths and partial gospels because of the technology, the technological connectedness of believers through the various social medias, podcasts, artists, and news. People in every church will be tempted and seduced by this spirit of deception. Now is the time to ground people in the truth of God's word. Now is the time to unveil the deceptions before they become prevalent. Now is the time to build an army of teachers and students who are equipped to defend the truth of the Bible. Now is the time to identify the characteristics of true believers. Now is the time to develop reproducible and transferable materials and processes to disciple and deploy people. I have ordained the rock for this purpose from the very beginning. I have established a firm foundation of truth and developed a people who love the truth. In fact, there are people far and wide who have been affected by the truth coming out of the rock, and they know when they hear the true word of God. As you begin to launch this new phase, many people, including pastors and leaders, will follow you. But others will discount the urgency that you speak of, along with the need to take such bold and deliberate steps. But my spirit will go with you and empower you. This movement will be fruitful and will multiply exceedingly. It will run on the rails of OSL, thereby going very quickly into other nations. Allow me to lead you. Hear the urgency in my voice. The hour has come to act decisively. Business as usual is over. You were born for such a time as this. And let me tell you, this is not doom and gloom. It's an urgency of the Lord to say, listen, I've got all the power I need. I've got everything, but I need your attention. I need your cooperation. I need you to be in alignment with what I'm saying because there's so much distraction in this world. There's so much that preoccupies our minds that we can't hear and follow the Lord. And now we see what we might call simultaneous extremes. Extreme darkness covering the earth and extreme light covering us. Okay, so you can see that I was speaking these things, and let me tell you, I did not know what all I was speaking of. And I don't think I was uh, talking about only what's happening right now with the pandemic, but I believe that it has begun. And the Lord was wanting this to get out and to declare now, see it now, be ready for it now. Folks, let me tell you something uh, that may concern some of you, but it should comfort you. It should comfort you to know that our shepherd, the Lord, is speaking to us. He's saying, listen, this is going to be going down, but I got you. I'm speaking to you. Just follow my voice. Follow my lead. Surely the Lord God does nothing unless he reveals his secrets to his servants, the prophets. And so anyway, I spoke that out. I released that. I'll show you a couple of more clips in just a minute. But let me tell you what happened. It was just some weeks later that this pandemic was declared March 11 to be exact. And I mean, everything changed. I mean, lockdowns began, began all over the world and certainly here in the United States. But let me tell you what happened. Churches in America, all of a sudden, I mean, the biggest churches to the smallest churches could not meet on campus. I mean, talk about a wilderness. And God said the wilderness. But guess what? He said, I'll make a road in the wilderness. Instantly, the Lord opened for us to be able to minister online, and we'd already had our live stream going, but the Lord just showed us exactly what to do, and we began to broadcast our services online, and we began to even post daily shows, daily Bible reading, daily prayer, daily messages and such, and what did the Lord do? He made a road in the wilderness, a road in the wilderness, and then we heard that there were some other prophets that were speaking and had actually prophesied. We heard Chuck Pierce's prophecy way back in September of 2019 that in the early months of the year, there would be a massive plague-like invasion. Oh my goodness, you can't fake that. In fact, you know, it's Lamentations 337 that says, I don't have it in my notes, but it says this. It says, who is he who speaks and it comes to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Who, who can speak and it come to pass when the Lord has not commanded it? Well, the Lord obviously had commanded it. And he, he continued to prophesy in subsequent times, on subsequent occasions, about 
this pandemic that was going to happen. I don't know that he used that term, but he said about Passover, that Passover is when this thing would uh, culminate or something uh, begin to come to a conclusion. And that's what we saw right about Passover just a few weeks ago. This thing began to peak and has now begun to decline. We're starting to see the reopening of businesses and the lockdown, the, the beginning stages of the lockdown uh, being released and such. And just according to the prophecy of a modern day prophecy, not a biblical prophecy, a modern day prophecy, it shows you that the gifts of the Spirit are truly still in operation today. Now, here's what I wanted to get to. Listen to this. That was a true Passover. And I mean, God did it. We, we felt led to uh, put something red out in front of our doors uh, that would symbolize the blood of Jesus protecting us, protecting our families. We talked about all this. The, the Psalm, Psalm 105, 37, he also brought them out with silver and gold, and there was none feeble among his tribes. And let me tell you, we've had testimony after testimony of the people of God who are looking to the Lord, and even amidst this, whether they lost their jobs or not, whether they were furloughed or not, whether they were business owners that were shut down or not, we're hearing testimony after testimony about how God God did exactly what he did in the Passover. He brought his children out of a plague. In fact, 10 plagues. He brought them out, protected them. He brought them out with blessing. And we're watching the Lord do that. By the way, if you have not yet uh, been blessed of the Lord, if you're struggling, because there are so many people now. I just uh, heard where the latest report pushed it up to 36 million people filing for unemployment in just the last six weeks or so. That's a lot of people. Well, let me tell you, 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 if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're not like everybody else. Look to God. Humble yourself. Get alone if you need to. Call out to the Lord. Lift your hands. Lift your voice to Him and say, God, you are my God. You are my provider. Sustain me, Lord. Provide for me, Lord. He is so compassionate. He is so tender-hearted. But we have to humble ourselves to actually do those things, to call on him and to say, we need you, Lord. We need you, Lord. So uh, that was a true Passover, and the Lord is doing it. We're, we're walking this thing out with testimonies. Now, here's, here's the big news. Now, this prophetic season is still playing out. Now we're coming up to a true Pentecost. May 31st is the anniversary of the day of Pentecost. This is 50 days after Passover, and it's the anniversary, May 31st. Well, uh, we've heard some churches that have begun to rally and feel led because the day of Pentecost was the birth of the church. <laughs> when the day of Pentecost had fully come and the Holy Spirit fell and such. Well, listen to this. Uh, many pastors are feeling led to open up their campuses again and such, even though the, the lockdown has not been released. And yes, it is uh, something of a defiance, but I haven't heard one pastor speak with any tone of arrogance. They're all wanting to do it in a very safe manner uh, with social distancing and cleanliness and safety and such. Uh, everybody's wanting to do it very respectfully, but wanting to do it because it's the anniversary of the birth of the church, but also because many feel like, like the Holy Spirit is leading them to do it. Well, look, we understand that there are many different angles to this scenario. On one side, you have uh, vulnerable people uh, who, if they contract this virus because of their age, because of underlying uh, diseases and sicknesses and such, well, they're, they're vulnerable to being adversely affected in a severe way. And do we care about that? You better believe we care about that. Every human life is precious. And uh, anybody that's been following with us, you know that uh, we've been very quick to want to make sure that we're safe and that we, I've even encouraged many pastors to also follow the guidelines and let's, uh, let's not be contrary to what's happening and let's be sensitive to the vulnerable. On the other hand, there are people that are very concerned about the overreach of government, and especially when it comes to churches and ministries, because churches and ministries, religious institutions, are protected even above businesses by our Constitution, by uh, the amendment, the First Amendment. And so uh, this is very important, and, and it's important that we don't give away 
our freedoms that have been afforded to us, we believe by the Lord. God instituted these things. And so there, there are the two spectrums, and then there are a number of issues in between. Well, we have really looked over these, prayed over these and such. But let me tell you what it comes down to for every pastor, every church, every people group, every family. Here's what it comes down to for a believer now. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and don't lean on your own understanding. See, all of us have a perspective. All of us have an opinion. All of us have a way of seeing these things. But the Bible says, but you don't just follow your own thinking. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge Him and He will direct your paths. And so that's what we're doing. We've been looking to the Lord, seeking Him and praying. James 1.5, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask of God. And it goes on to say, He will give them the wisdom. And that's what we've been doing. Well, so what is God saying to us? That's what I want to get to right now. What is the Lord saying? I want to go back a little bit and tell you it's not just what God is saying, it's what God has been saying. God has been speaking, and we should not ignore what God's saying. We should say, Lord, you've been saying this, and what are you saying now? And put them all together, and guess what? It's all the same thing. So I want you to see now, I want to show you a clip where the Lord warned us that not only was there some darkness coming, but in the same message, that first message of Rock Conference, it was such a prophetic message. And I'm not saying that because I taught it. I'm saying that because I knew when the Lord was giving me that, that God was speaking some things that were beyond my knowledge. But I want to show you some clips here where the Lord wanted me to teach and talk about and to say some things about how not only was there something of darkness coming to the earth, but... He even wanted me to hit that laws would be changed. And you know, laws were changed so that right now churches cannot meet. Churches are prohibited from meeting and gathering. And I want you to listen to what the Lord was saying February the 6th before we knew anything about this. Watch this. Notice the laws changed. Now we're going to treat you differently. Now you're the same people. You didn't change your behavior. You're not doing anything more adverse than you always have. But... We are seeing you differently than we used to see you. And because we're seeing you differently, we're going to adjust the laws and begin to treat you differently. We're not going to give you the, and extend to you the same freedoms that we always have. People in government that are proposing bills, decrees, laws against the people of God. Because there is the God of this world who has always been against the people of God and is looking to use even governments along with the perception of the society against the people of God. So the administrators and high officers went to the king and said, Long live King Darius. We are all in agreement, we administrators, officials, high officers, advisors, and governors, that the king should make a law that will be strictly enforced. Give orders that for the next 30 days, any person who prays to anyone divine or human, except to you, your majesty, will be thrown into the den of lions. And now, your majesty, issue and sign this law so that it cannot be changed, an official law of the Medes and Persians that cannot be re revoked. So the King Darius signed the law. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he cowered and he refused to pray. Is that what it said? Excuse me, let me try it again. But when Daniel learned that the law had been signed, he went home and knelt down as usual in his upstairs room with his windows open toward Jerusalem. He prayed three times a day, just as he always, uh, just the, as he had always done, giving thanks to his God. New rules, new laws. Now watch this. In Luke 22, if you'll come down to the 45th verse, and this is where Jesus said he's in the Garden of Gethsemane praying. And notice this, when he rose up from prayer and had come to his disciples, he found them, what? Sleeping from sorrow. Then he said to them, why do you sleep? And what does he say? Rise. Let me tell you, this is what the Lord is saying to his church right now. Why are you sleeping? Don't you know what's going on? Can't you see what's happening? Why are you not alert? Don't you see what's going on in the world? Don't just look at the politics. That will distract you. 
Look beyond the politics. Look into the spirit realm and see what the God of this age is doing to our world. Jesus said, why do you sleep? Rise and pray lest you enter into temptation. What does that mean? When this darkness comes, you are going to be tempted. You're going to be tempted to join it or you're going to be tempted to fight it the wrong way. There is a time that's coming. It is a time. And it will come on time. It will be here. There is a time that's coming, and I'm telling you now to see that there is a time coming when darkness is going to show up. And it's going to be right there. It's going to be all around you. Behold, darkness shall cover the earth. Jesus said, this is your hour. So in his situation, he said, it's here. Behold, this is your hour and the power of darkness. When this darkness goes down, when it happens, are you going to know how you as a believer are called to respond to that darkness? Or are you going to follow everybody else and how they're responding? See, we, we are supposed to be in tune in the spirit and know what our response is. Jesus was in prayer. He knew his response. But the disciples were asleep. And they would not rise. And finally, he barely got them up in time. Otherwise, they'd have been completely caught off guard by this. Isn't that right? And then, Lord, should we strike with the sword? And Peter said, I don't have to ask. And he just swung. And guess what? If Jesus had not stepped in with light, with the glory of God to heal Malchus' ear, Peter could have been executed on the spot and missed his ministry because he tried to take care of it in the natural. So watch this. Then Jesus said to the chief priests, captains of the temple, and elders who had come to him, have you come out as against a robber with swords and clubs? When I was with you daily in the temple, you did not try to seize me. Listen to what Jesus said. Now, what happened? Daily I was in the temple teaching the word of God, preaching the word of God, doing what I've always done, and you didn't try to seize me, and all of a sudden, now I'm a robber? All of a sudden now, what I stand for and what I do and what I believe in is a crime? How many of you can see, Jesus is explaining to us what the darkness looks like. The law changes. Okay, can you see that? When I was delivering that, it seemed a bit far-fetched, like how, how are the laws going to change so that pastors that are in the temple, so to speak, that are on their platforms preaching like they always have, all of a sudden they won't be able to do it. That's what Jesus said. Jesus said, I've been teaching daily in the temple and you didn't arrest me and all of a sudden now you're going to come and arrest me? What changed? See, and that was the point of the message and what the Lord was saying is that when darkness comes, laws change and it counters the preaching of the word and people that are ministering and, and the gospel. And wouldn't you know it, I, I, I know that this is a whole pandemic. This is not just in the natural realm about the church because business were, were shut down. I mean, it's a whole, whole society. However, notice what the Lord said, laws change. They may not be by legislation, but by executive order, but nonetheless, the laws changed. And we gave example after example, and the Holy Spirit was telling us, when darkness comes, laws will change so that you will not be able to worship and minister the way that you normally did. That's what happened in the days of Jesus, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, David, Esther, etc. The laws changed, and God was showing us this, and he was preparing us for this. But notice he also addressed how we respond. You know, Peter got up and he went to fight. He went to resist. And Jesus said, no, you're not in tune with what the Holy Spirit's doing here. This is not the time for you to respond in that way. But see, while Jesus was praying, Peter was sleeping. And this is what we need to get. We can't be sleeping and just respond with our natural minds and just listen to everybody else. Now, let me just tell you right now, uh, I don't have any criticism for any pastor that is opening, because the Holy Spirit 
calls different ministries and different people to do different things. We're the body of Christ. You know, I can have my right hand doing one thing. My left hand's not doing the same thing because we're part of the body, but we're different members of the body. And the Lord can direct different parts of the body of Christ to do different things. What the Lord was saying to us, however, is pay attention to me. Don't just react and respond with everybody else and presume that you're supposed to do this or that, that you're supposed to do what, uh, what everything that every government leader recommends that you do, or that, no, you, you should resist and stand for the con- your constitutional rights. Listen, I believe in all of these things in, in the right context, but the bottom line is, what's the Holy Spirit saying? And let me tell you, oh, brothers and sisters, God is speaking right now. Our God is not abandoning us and leaving us to our own thinking and our own perspectives. He is speaking and saying, this is exactly what I want you to do. So let me get to this last little clip that I want to show you here. Actually, a conglomeration. Because that whole message of Rock Conference, yes, it was about the darkness. And yes, it was about how we respond to any law that would change. And I didn't even know what I was talking about back then. Now I know why the Holy Spirit wanted that to be brought forth. But do you know what the whole message culminated into? What God was really talking about? House churches. God was saying very clearly, and I shared with the whole staff, we spent the the next two days after Rock Conference with all the lead pastors around the nation talking about how the Holy Spirit was saying, push the ministry from the campuses into the homes. Push the ministry from the campuses into the homes. I'm raising up people, people that have been discipled, people that I've invested into. I've called them to ministry. I've called them to ministry. They don't have to minister on a campus or whatever. No, they can minister right where they are, a home, a business, whatever it is. And so this was the culmination. This was the point of what God was saying. There's some darkness coming. How are you going to respond to that darkness? Laws will be changed. But, and so what I was saying was, what my sense was, God's telling us to begin to have house churches because something's going to be coming in the future. I thought it'd be longer, to tell you the truth. But I was wrong. Boy, it came right away. So listen to these clips. And I want you to hear what the Lord is saying. February the 6th, all these go together. It's all part of the same message. Uh, But let me tell you, the Holy Spirit was speaking. Listen to this. And we believe the Holy Spirit is saying, this is what we're going to train pastors to do. And we're going to open up thousands, hundreds, and then thousands of churches in homes, in businesses and such. Many uh, that'll be part of the rock, but there'll be many that are part of other ministries and such. But this is going to change. Somebody said, I thought the rock is a church. Well, the rock is a church. But however, the rock is going to be a whole collection of churches. We've done rock groups, but let me tell you, the Lord is saying, no, I don't just want groups. I need churches. I need churches with real pastors, real teachers. I need the Word of God to be taught right there. The Word of God to be counseled into people and such. The Lord is also telling us, you are going to see more people get saved than you've ever seen before. You're going to see more people change, more people than ever before. And that's exactly what God is saying to us. God is saying, I want you to teach and train people who will know my word and be able to unpack my word. So can you see what the Lord is saying? The Lord was tipping us off saying, hey, darkness is coming. This is going to affect the entire world. Laws are going to be changed. But begin to push the ministry down into homes because so much more can happen at the local level in homes and in neighborhoods than can happen in a large auditorium or something that, you know, is is on television or on the Internet or whatever. And the Lord knew this. God's got a plan. And these house churches are not only going to be fruitful, but they're going to multiply, okay? Well, that was February the 6th, but this thing continued to play out, okay? Now listen to this. We've been praying here in in the last few weeks, God, what do we do? When when are we going to open? What are you saying? And we got on a call, the apostolic team of the rock, we got on a call, a prayer and discernment call. We were on it for over two hours. And I mean, we started off in prayer. And then uh, I had some questions for them. Hey, what is the Lord saying? What is he saying about May 31st, the day of Pentecost? What is he saying about 
uh, reopening our campus, our campuses, and so on. And let me tell you, different apostolic team members began to share what the Holy Spirit had been saying to them from the Bible reading. And I'm telling you, it became crystal clear to us. We knew 100%. There was not one dissenting voice, not even a hint. Every single one of us knew by the Holy Spirit, this is exactly what the Lord is saying. Well, let me give you just a taste of some of these scriptures. And this is just really a taste. But in Acts 1-4, one of our apostolic team members brought this up. And this is, this is before the day of Pentecost when Jesus is commanding them to stay in Jerusalem. And it says in Acts 1, 4, and 5, And being assembled together with them, Jesus commanded them not to de depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Oh, when they brought up this word wait, I just knew. Oh, that's the prophetic word of the Lord that's saying, look, other churches may be opening their campus on May 31st, but for you, wait. Wait. Why? Because I'm going to do something by my spirit among you. What I've been telling you about, notice this, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Now, we know that was the Holy Spirit. But for us, this was the Lord saying to us, I promised you that I was going to do something powerful with house churches. Wait for that. Wait for that. Don't open up the campuses now. No, allow me to do, to move by my spirit and to launch this fresh, new ministry of house churches. And so we get over to Acts chapter 2 now. Listen closely. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, now that's coming really the evening of the 30th and into the 31st of May, okay? When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Here's the unity. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Listen closely. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. Not the temple, not the synagogue, not a church building. No, what did it fill? When the, when the church was born, the church was born in a house. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. And boy, this sunk so deep into me that the Lord said, I birthed the church in a house and I'm rebirthing the church in homes. Now, this is not, I'm not saying this is a widespread revelation and word for everybody in the body of Christ. What I am saying is this is what the Lord is saying to us. He's rebirthing us in a fresh way by the power of His Spirit, but He's doing it in, in homes. Now, will we open up our campuses? I believe we will. Do I know when we're going to open up our campuses? No, not only am I not exactly sure when we're going to open up our campuses, but the Lord has set me at peace and, and let me know. He'll tell us. He'll let us know. He said, focus on this. Focus on what I'm doing by my spirit. And so we're not going to focus on doing something right now. The Lord is not calling us to focus on opening up our campuses in defiance of any law or executive order, and that be the conversation. The Lord's saying, no, I want the conversation of my people at the rock, and this would include solid lives, house churches as well. I want the conversation to be about what the Holy Spirit is doing, about the launching of ministries, your ministry, the ministry God has called you to, taking you into a new season, a new era. See, this is what we need to be focusing on, praying about, being excited about. And so notice this. It says, and suddenly a uh, sound from heaven, a rushing mighty wind filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then it went on to say in verse 4, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Boy, this sunk so deep into me. The Lord said, see, this is what I want to do. They were all filled and they all spoke. This is not everybody come together and sit and let one person speak. He's saying, no, I want to move among my church and get everybody activated, everybody activated. And so there may be one primary leader of each of these house churches or a couple, but everybody gets a chance to speak and to share and to interact. In a house church, you can have some conversation where you can't do that in a larger uh, setting and such. Well, what was the result of that? Well, you know, what happened? The Holy Spirit moved and Peter opened his mouth. And I mean, that day, 3,000, verse 41, 3,000 were added to the church. So listen to this. Among all this pandemic, God opened up this online ministry immediately, a road in the wilderness. But now 
Here comes the rivers in the desert. See, the water is a type of the Holy Spirit. This, this is the rivers now. I'll even make a road in the wilderness. That was all of our online ministry. And now the Lord's saying, and I'm bringing now rivers in the desert. So there are going to be rivers in these homes all over, all over. All of you out there watching, listening, I don't know what state or what nation you're in. We've already had some people from other nations contact us and let us know we're interested in launching a uh, a house church, either with the rock or solid lives. And we believe this is going to happen. This is going to spread all over the nation and beyond our borders because God is doing something by his spirit. Now, you had something that uh, you were going to share about this because God is speaking. Yes. And by the way, I love how Isaiah says that he will make a road, singular road, in the wilderness. But then it says he will make bring rivers of water into yeah, the desert. Right. So rivers, multiplied rivers, house churches, I believe for us, it is so right on. Uh, Luke chapter 5, Jesus said this in verses... Uh, 37. He says, no one puts new wine into old wineskins or else the new wine will burst the wineskins and be spilled and the wineskins will be ruined. But new wine must be put into new wineskins and both are preserved. Mm. And no one having drunk old wine immediately desires the new for he says the old is better. <laughs> Jesus points out something about humanity. Whatever something new comes, the first time we begin to taste it, it's it's different. It's not what we're accustomed to. And the natural human side in us yep. wants to uh, or seems to think the old is better. But Jesus was letting the people know, listen, you you may think the old is better, but trust me, what <laughs> I'm bringing right. is so much better. And so that's why we need ears to hear, eyes to see, that's and a heart right. to receive. Because our natural human side wants the comfort of what is known. Yep. But new wine, what Jesus is pouring into these days, let me tell you, it's worth the new wineskins. Yes, skins. it is. And that's what God has been doing in us, too, is building new wineskins, preparing us to be able to receive something new. Amen. And uh, we're going to be so glad that yes, we, we were are. new wineskins receiving new wine. We've been through this before yep. where the Lord was speaking something counterintuitive. Right. It wasn't the most comfortable thing. It yep. was the opposite of what was yeah. comfortable. And yet we did it. And all oh, have we seen God yeah. move in extraordinary ways. And this is one of those. Yeah. In fact, in my opinion, what I believe, not just an opinion, what I believe the Lord is saying, this is the biggest one that we've ever seen. Yeah. And these are the early stages. You said this in, in as you were sharing the message that this is a beginning. Mm -hmm. uh, even this whole pandemic, this is not an end. I believe That's that right. there's this is a beginning of, of a new era. That's right. And so... What we're doing here, what God is leading us into, is bigger, greater than what we know because we don't see what two years down the road That's is going right. to be. But we're going to be really glad that we did. We absolutely are. You are. And yeah. we are. Yes. And you may want to listen to that whole message, by the way. But just remember that uh, what's happening now was not happening back then. So, you know, the Bible says we, we prophesy in part. We know in part and prophesy in part. We're looking through a glass dimly or darkly. And so you don't see everything when you're speaking it out mm -hmm. prophetically. Now I see it so much yeah. more clearly, and you will too when you're listening. Uh, but this is so important. Jesus said, nobody <laughs> that has tasted the old. And that might be the campus ministry, the way that we always met on campuses. Yeah. We're going to get there. We're going we're gonna to come back to the campuses, and we are looking forward to it, let me tell you. Yeah. However, Jesus is saying, I'm pouring. It's like our glass is right there in front of us. And Jesus is pouring and saying, drink this. Drink this, what I'm giving you now. And we're like, ah, no, I, I kind of like the old. Jesus is saying, no, you're going to like this. This is good. This is going to be a wonderful thing. And of course, it's a move of the Spirit. This is a move of God. Okay, now let me close with Joshua. I was reading in our daily reading, Joshua, and uh, I was trying, I like to read the one two plan, so I'm reading uh, through the whole Bible once in the New Testament twice. And so sometimes I'll fall a little behind in some of the reading. And I was behind on the Old Testament, and in Joshua chapter one, oh, I got to verse two. Let me just read verse two. Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I didn't make it through the rest of this chapter, 
the Holy Spirit spoke to me clearly what he was saying. When I read this, Moses, my servant, was dead. That was not talking to me about a person. We know that's about Moses. But the Lord was saying very clearly, and I'm telling you, I know this by the Spirit of the Lord. The old way of doing church is over. That doesn't mean we're not going to come back to campuses. I'm very confident we are going to come back to campuses. But the Lord was saying the model of ministry, the way that ministry happens, will happen, needs to happen, that God wants it to happen. He said, that's completely over. I've got a whole new way, Joshua, to take the people into the promised land. This wilderness season where God did miracles, water out of the rock, manna every day, uh, turn the bitter water sweet. God uh, making sure their shoes didn't wear out, their clothes didn't wear out, etc., etc. Miracle after miracle. God said, yeah, that was, those were the wilderness miracles. I'm taking you now into the promised land. Moses is dead. It's going to be different now. Let it be dead. Let that old wineskin be gone, like Jesus said. Okay, so Moses, my servant, is dead. Now, therefore, arise. God was saying, get up. Come on. Let's go. Don't sit and watch. There's some people who are complacent saying, well, well, let's just see how it goes. Let's just see what everybody, else, see if it works for them. And if it works for them, I'll jump in. All right. <laughs> but don't be like the guy that was sitting there when, when at the pools of Bethesda when the angel was stirring up the water, but only the first one got healed. Now listen, when the Holy Spirit is speaking, make sure to act. Now, therefore, arise. Now, watch this. Go over this Jordan. This is time. This is the, the Lord said some things to me. He said, this is the real promised land now. This is what I've been speaking to you about for, you know, over 20 years. This is, this is it. This is the big one that we've been praying about and we're, and, uh, we're coming into now. Go over this Jordan. You and all this people. The Lord said to me, this is not just for the leaders. This is for everybody. Take everybody across this Jordan. You and all this people to the land. Listen to this. Here it is. To the land which I am giving to them. Mm -hmm. Oh, that sunk so deep yeah. into me. The Lord is, was saying to me, many times he said, I'm going to fulfill your ministry, talking to me and such. But now the Lord's saying, no, in this new era, it's not about the people coming and partnering with you to fulfill the assignment I gave you. It's about you equipping them for the work of the ministry that I've called them to. This promised land is about you and your calling, your vision, your assignment, your destiny, your God-given mission in life. And this is what the Lord is saying. The Lord is saying, you're going to go across this Jordan. And now this land, in fact, verse 6 says it like this. It says, for to this people you shall divide. We're not, God is not calling us right now, May 31st, to everybody come back together on one piece of property. No, he's saying, no, we're going to the promised land and we're going to have ministry property over here and ministry property over there and here and there and here and there in homes everywhere. You're going to divide it. You're going to divide it to the people because these are their ministries. And my job and our job as pastors and leaders is to equip mm -hmm. you for the ministry. And so, yeah, it's, it's new. It's different. It may be a little unnerving to some of you. You may be a little apprehensive, but the Holy Spirit is saying, I'm with you. I'm going to drive out those giants. I'm going to give you this territory. You're not going to be out in the wilderness anymore eating manna. No, you're going to be on your own land, so to speak, and you're going to be eating the fruits of your own labor. You're going to be seeing your own fruitfulness of ministry and life come to pass. This is what the Lord is saying. Isn't that powerful? Yeah. And even as you're saying that, you know, <laughs> deeper understanding of seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness mm. and all these things shall be added to you. Because there's an invitation here for you to be about the Father's business. Oh, yes, there to is. To use your place, to use your home or your business as a place to gather others to expand the kingdom of God to become disciples, right? That's so right. what is that? Is I'm going to seek first what God wants to do, and God says, I'll take care of the rest. That's right. I'll take care of, I, I sensed that for some of you, you've been believing God to own <laughs> your own home. Seek first the kingdom of God. Be willing to yield That's to exactly Him. That's exactly right. What you have right now may be a rented apartment. That's right. But say, God, if this is what you're calling us to, we will give this place to you. I'm, I'm telling you, yes. God will respond to you. That's prophetic Seek first, right there. Yes. and He'll add. Yes, He will. He will give to you. He will meet needs. 
because you're stewarding <laughs> his kingdom plan. This yeah. is available to every believer. This is so This powerful. is not just for a few people no, that's right. who have felt called that's right. to ministry. Yep. Every believer, Ephesians 2.10, God has prepared works for you that you should walk in. As much as God will pay for and fund any campus yeah. of a church, he will fund any home that is dedicated to him. And the Lord has spoken to us. Remember that every home that launches the house church is to be an embassy, embassy yeah. of the kingdom of God. That property, that land belongs to the kingdom of mm. God. And that's that's under the sovereign rule of the Lord. Uh, that's something else we'll have to get to another time. But this is powerful what you just said. Let me tell you, God is with you. God is with you in this. Be strong and of good courage. In fact, this is what really verse 6 says. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give them. Yeah. Not to give you, Joshua. No, to give them. So our job and our assignment, oh, and it is a joyous assignment, yeah. is now to help you to launch your ministries. And this is, I don't know where all of you are, all over the nation, various parts of the world. Boy, but you're connecting. You're hearing the spirit of the living God speak to you right now and saying, I want you to connect with this and I want you to launch this. And we're going to help you. We're going to equip you to do it. So I need to get into now some practicals as we end up. You need to listen very closely. Very closely. We'll put these on the lower thirds, but listen very closely. Okay, first of all, there are two streams of house churches that the Lord has called us to launch. One is the rock. The rock. The rock is the, the church, the multi-site church, many campuses, many congregations, multiple languages that we pastor, pastor. We launched it back in April of 2000, 20 years ago. Okay, so one is the rock. There's going to be a whole network of rock house churches. If you're part of the rock, then I expect that you, you would open up a, a house church of the rock. But there's also solid lives. There's some of you that are beyond the rock. Maybe you're not part of a congregation of the rock. And so we've got another ministry, a nonprofit organization that is a sort of a sister uh, partner with the rock that we lead. The Lord called us to lead it with Operation Solid Lives and all kinds of other ministries that are part BFAM. And uh, it's called Solid Lives. And you may feel called and to not be under the rock, which is a four square church, but to be part of this other ministry. And we're going to have our whole Solid Lives network of house churches. Either way, let me tell you, if the Spirit of God is leading you, then we have some options. So let me give you these options now. And uh, there are three house church, three levels of house churches. OK, and this first level is a new development. A new development. And we're just breaking the news. This is breaking news right now. <laughs> Here's what it is. That we feel led of the Holy Spirit that not every house church out there has to be certified. And, and certification is important because uh, if you're really going to be a part of the rock or you're really going to be a part of solid lives, then we have to have certain ethical standards and we have to have certain guidelines and such so that we're safe and we're doing it correctly and such. But the Lord told us, yes, you'll have that. But let anybody out there that's listening receive the equipping and launch their house church and such, their own organization. If, if they're out there and they're not already affiliated with you, they may have their own or they may already be a part of a church and such. Well, that's great. So there are going to be informal, informal house churches. And so this is the fastest way to get started. Let me tell you what day you should start if you feel called. May 31st. That's two weekends from now. May 31st. Why? This is the day of Pentecost. It is the relaunch of the church. And this is what the Holy Spirit is saying. The wind of the Holy Spirit and the rivers of the Holy Spirit are flowing and saying there's a relaunch. There's something happening May 31st. Now, of course, we're going to put this on demand so you can start at any time. You don't have to start at a particular service time. OK, so we'll have it the whole weekend available to you. But I'm recommending 
that you do it on May 31st. Maybe if you want to do it on Saturday the evening because uh, the day of Pentecost would have started in the evening and then gone into the next day until the next evening. And so anyway, I'm recommending this. So any of you can just start. I'll tell you how to do it in just a minute. But the second level is the one we've been working on. we got about 150 people already that have let us know they're interested and they're in the process here of becoming a certified house church. And there's a multi-step process that we walk through and doing our due diligence to partner and to make sure that we're all on the same page and that these really are certified house churches, either of the rock or of solid lives. And then third is uh, the top level. This is where I really would like to get all of our house churches to is a pastor led house church. These would be certified, but also we want to train. God has called us to raise up pastors. So we're launching the BFAM, B-F-A-M, be, be Fruitful and Multiply Training Center this fall. And it is to raise up leaders. It is to raise up pastors. And let me tell you, our lead professors Amazing. are, oh, there aren't they anointed? Oh, let me tell you, you're going to be so blessed and enriched and equipped for the ministry, highly and experienced. And it's online as well. It's going so to be it's not online. going to limit only those who That's are near exactly the Edmund right. campus. We'll launch one at The Rock here, and other churches, no doubt, will be a part, but it'll be online, and you'll be trained. The BFAM Training Center, we'll let you know about that. But we want to train people to study the Word and to be teachers of the Word so that they can be licensed as pastors. And so not everybody that goes through classes will be licensed. You have to meet the criteria and such. But this is what we're called to do, to raise up leaders, to raise up pastors, and to launch churches. And so uh, what do we do? We got this coming up in two weeks, okay? Well, this Thursday, this coming Thursday evening, we're going to have two different live stream trainings that are going to happen. And then we'll put them on YouTube as well because some people might not be able to come right at that time. But at 6 p.m. on Thursday, Pacific time, 6 p.m., we're going to have practical, practical training. We've done introductory training already for many people, which is available on YouTube, but this is now practical. How exactly are these going to flow? What exactly should we do to facilitate these house churches? So practical training. At six, it's going to be for the Solid Lives group. Anybody that would like to launch with Solid Lives will tell you how to do that because these services are going to be distinct. Okay, so that's at 6 p.m. At 7 p.m. Pacific time, we're going to follow immediately back up with live stream. And we're going to uh, do the practical training for the Rock House Church Network. And uh, this is, you want to start with us on the day of Pentecost that weekend, then get, be a part of this training. Now, how do you get these links? Just go to those respective websites. We'll put them on the screen here. Go to therock.com. Very easy to remember. Go to therock.com and you'll see the house church training link there. And then also solidlives.com and you'll see the house church uh, training link there and uh, the live stream link. And we'll send you an e-blast and such if you're on our list and, and we'll make sure that you know about this. Now, that's Thursday night. Next weekend in the services, just like we're doing right now, this is spiritual preparation. Right now, we're making this big prophetic announcement. We're declaring the Holy Spirit is going to begin moving yes. in a powerful way on Pentecost Sunday, May 31st. But next week begins spiritual preparation. And we know that Jesus commanded them. Listen to this. Jesus commanded them some days before, about a week before or so. He commanded them to go to Jerusalem and to wait. Yeah. And to wait. What did they do? They prayed. Mm -hmm. They prayed. And there will be a time of fasting. We talked about this, right? Some fasting and prayer. We're going to talk about this next week because next weekend we'll have a week to prepare. Not only prepare our house or whatever, uh, but also prepare spiritually so that the Holy Spirit can come and do His work. Isn't that right? And by the way, somebody would say, well, what are we supposed to do? Invite people over because we're still in lockdown? Well, we don't really know exactly how things are going to play out in the next couple of weeks. Things change seemingly every day. But let me tell you this. You can just meet with the people that live in your household. Or if you have some relatives that already come over to see you and to visit you and to bring things to you, you can meet with them. We're not encouraging anybody or asking anybody to go outside of any guidelines or comfort zones. 
we trust you to be led by the Holy Spirit to do it the way that you should do it to launch. And it'll be different as time goes on. But launch it the way that you feel led by the Lord, and He'll show you exactly what to do. So next weekend is spiritual preparation. And then two weeks from this weekend, oh, that's when mm -hmm. we get to Pentecost Sunday. And let me tell you, it's going to be a move of God. The service is going to be so powerful, so powerful. So I want to tell you right now, God has called us to raise up house church leaders and house church pastors. And I want to pray over all of you right now. And I want you to engage with us. I want you to engage. Somebody might be listening. You don't even know Jesus as your Savior. Right now, vocalize your, your faith in Him. Say, Lord Jesus, something is happening in my heart. And I believe you died on the cross to pay for my sins. I believe that you were raised from the dead that third day. And I put my faith in you. Cleanse me, wash me, and use my life. Let me tell you. God will answer that prayer. Mm -hmm. God is looking for people. He said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So call on him sincerely and then begin following with us. Let us disciple you. Go to OSL online and get discipled mm -hmm. and watch what God does. But let's pray right now as we close here, honey. Grab my hand. Let's pray. Stretch your other hand toward everybody. We're praying for ministers. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Many of them have known for years and they've already been ministering. But there are some who that have disqualified themselves. Yes. Who God's saying, you exactly. are not disqualified. Exactly. And the Lord is speaking that yeah. so uh, pointedly. You are not disqualified. That's he right. qualifies you. He qualifies you. And so in the name of Jesus, oh, we pray Jesus. over you that your territory, your land, the plan, the assignment that the Lord has given you yes. will come to pass. Yes. It will come to pass. You will Thank see you, this Lord. through in the name of Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> oh, you will not lack. God will be with you. He'll show you. Uh, be strong and of good courage because you will possess the land, the ministry, the calling, and those other things that God has planned and prepared for you. You will possess them. We declare yes. it now in the name yes. of Jesus. In Jesus' name. I, I call forth things that God spoke to you for yes. some of you decades ago. Amen. And the enemy has said, you're too old. It's too late. Mm. In Jesus' name, we call forth those yes, things. We do. God's calling and His in gifts Jesus name. are irrevocable. Yes. Listen to Him this week. He's going to connect dots for you. He's going to revive things in you. And you, by faith, take that territory because Thank He's prepared God. it. It belongs to you. Amen. It belongs to you. In the name in of Jesus, Jesus name. we agree on that. Thank you, Lord. Amen Thank and you, amen. Lord. Amen. Okay, now look. Uh, this is the time to arise. The Lord said, okay, you heard what I'm saying. Now get active. So this is the time. Listen to these closing announcements that we're making. But go to the websites. Go to therock.com, sawlife.com. Get signed up. There's also a place there where you can sign up to, uh, to become a certified house church interest form. But certainly make sure that you're connected with us. And let's stay in tune. I, I believe that we'll launch hundreds of house yeah. churches on May 31st. Isn't that powerful? It is. This is so on exciting. Pentecost Sunday. Okay. <laughs> Don't go away. Listen to these closing announcements. And then we look forward to seeing you next week. Wow, what an amazing message. You can clearly see that God is speaking and He's doing things. Well, I hope that this message built your faith and even inspired you to jump on board to this house church movement. Now, just a reminder to you, when Pastor Jerry and Kimberly recorded this, this was last week. So those trainings that Pastor Jerry was talking about, those are now available on his YouTube page. You can go to YouTube forward slash Jerry German, and you can watch those anytime. Now, if you're interested in starting a house church, you can go to therock.com, and you can find the interest form there and submit it. If you have any questions, you can email me at battlecreek at sawlives.com, and I'd be happy to answer any questions. Now again, thank you so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you next week.